Welcome to our next episode of Conversations with the Pros with myself, Michael Parkhurst, my partner, Greg Garza. We are excited to bring to you one of the best left backs in MLS this season, a former teammate of ours, John Gallagher. John Gallagher, who is the definition of the word resilience, someone who has been through a lot in the last uh, five, six years of his early MLS career and his understood that the fact of never giving up and continuing to trust your own process is essential to your own success. Uh, we are looking forward to having John with us and uh, diving a little bit into his mind. And don't forget, if you want us to speak with anybody in particular or want us to address any certain topics, please let us know in the link below or uh, type it in and, and let us know and we can uh, discuss those certain aspects. All right, so I guess first for me is, all right, you turn pro, you get dra or drafted by Atlanta, right? Come into a team that's had some success already, bunch of foreigners playing, you know, your position at the time, which was an attacking player. Uh, so how is that adjustment coming from college? What were your expectations? And um, how did you deal with um, not playing too much with the first team, you know, early on in your career? Yeah, I mean, my expectations were obviously that it was going to be difficult. Um, I didn't realize just how difficult it would be. Now, obviously, that might be playing a part in the fact that, you know, my first rookie year was the year that Atlanta won MLS Cup. So the roster was, was pretty good and there's some pretty talented players, especially in the positions that I was competing in. But, um, Confidence was huge. Confidence was huge for me. Um, and uh, thankfully, there was a second team um, where I was able to, you know, continue to play. But, you know, there was weeks where, you know, I'm not even getting a sniff. I'm not close to even making the roster, the match day 20, whatever it was. Um, and just kind of keeping your head down and, and you know, continuing to believe, even when it might seem so far-fetched when you're competing against guys like Miguel Almiron or... Joseph, you know, regardless of how tough the challenge might be, it was always, um, you know, I was young, I was still learning and um, just tried to stay as positive as I could be. Awesome. And so when you, when you had these opportunities to play with the twos, was it disappointment because you weren't with the ones and you're like, oh, I got to go play with the twos or was, was it different than that? I always tried to be as positive as I could. Uh, with it, um, you know, I, I love playing, so it was always an opportunity to go compete. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough to be able to play this this sport every day and train. But you know, we live for the weekends when when we get to play, you know, against the opposition and actually, um, yeah, as I said, compete. So I was always looking really forward to it, um, and I tried to view it as a chance where I knew there was going to be people you know, front office watching, coaches from the first team watching, second team coaches obviously reporting feedback on how I do. So, you know, I knew there, w there was value in those games and I had to perform. Yeah, my well, question John, would be, we, we talk a lot about with our with athletes and our, our young athletes about resilience, right? I have resilience. Um, if you were to give your definition of resilience during those first two years of your career and um, you know, having that mental fortitude and that mental toughness to keep going. You know, you see a lot of you see a lot of people once they get to that spot and they're not able to uh, get that they had hoped for. Sometimes just fold their cart, might give up. How did you how did you keep that mental fortitude going throughout? Um, you know, that line of those few first, first couple of years. Yeah, when I when I look back at it, it's probably. Um not giving yourself any other option but to believe that it will happen someday um and, and when i look back when i look back on it now and i'm thinking of the positions that i was in you know I, I i'm thinking wow like i was crazy to believe that you know i might get a chance and i did and it's all about taking those little opportunities but because i always felt deep down Regardless of how far far away it felt at the time, I always believed that, you know, I'm going to get an opportunity. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get to that level soon. Um, yeah, as I said, there was there was times where, where 
you know, I felt like I wasn't even close and I was out of mind, out of sight, but I just, I kept knowing that, you know, one, one more opportunity will come. Um, I just have to have to believe that it will. And when it does, I'll be ready. And that was kind of my motivation every day was, you know, I've got to prepare for when that moment will be. And I don't know when it will be. Anybody could be watching at any time, but I know that I'll stay prepared. Yep. Yeah, John, I think, you know, you, you were obviously a great pro, even with all of those things going on uh, from the beat, from the get go. Right. You were still one of the first ones uh, in every day and still one of the last ones to leave every day. And that shows that shows that resilience that shows that, you know, that positivity that you had um, throughout even going through through those tough moments. Um, and there always be trials and tribulations. And it's, it's never a linear um, trajectory that we go through. Right. Um, no. I think for young young kids to understand, I, I will say this, you know, how, how did you view it as a way to continue to even do the extra, right? And I know you're, a, you're I know you're a firm believer that even the off season, um, you know, you're you're always doing the extra. You do you do everything you can to continue uh, just to to build that not only reputation within yourself, but that extra internal motivation. How do you find that internal motivation of always doing the extra? Yeah, um, I mean, when I look when I look at it. There's obviously like the the perfect way to make it pro. You know, you're in the academy and then you sign a contract and then you're in the first team. Whereas, I mean, you can count on one hand how many people have that experience. Um, there's hundreds of other professional soccer players out there and, and every one of them have a different path. So that was my the way I always looked at it. It's like, it's not going to be a smooth road. It's going to be up, it's going to be down. And... Um, you know, for me, the biggest thing was was habits that I create every day. You know, can I get the extra little 1%, whether it was, you know, can I be more hydrated? Can I get an extra 20 minutes of sleep? Can I watch a little bit extra film? You know, can I get a little bit more than the other guy that I'm competing against? So that when we're out in the field, I know those 1% are going to add up. And yeah, for me, habits, habits have always been a big thing in my career and, and they still are, you know, even even when I'm now in, in a much better place than I was six, seven years ago, I'm still doing the same things because I know that it's like a compound effect. When you get traded, um, you know, obviously only pros get traded, right? But kids switch teams, kid get, kids get cut from academies and it could be crushing. You know, even getting traded, right, can be crushing. Sometimes guys want to get traded. Sometimes they don't, right? I had experience going from Columbus to Atlanta where I didn't want to get traded. Uh, I wanted to stay in Columbus, and I was really disappointed at the time. Um, then everything happens for a reason, of course. Um, take me through getting traded from Atlanta, the mental side of it, and kind of, you know, outside of obviously you have to move, right? But um how, how did you feel and how did you use that um, to where you are now? Yeah, I, I mean, um, you, you said it yourself, right? I, I'm a firm believer that everything does happen for a reason. Um, you know, I I would say it was just, I was in a similar situation where in Atlanta I was pretty comfortable. I was happy. I was competing. Um, I had my breakthrough with the with the first team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I met my wife there, her family was there. I was going into my fifth year there. It was starting to feel like home. And then you get a call that you've been traded. Um, and in the moment you can either be down and, and feel sorry for yourself, or you can, you know, try to see the bright side and be like, okay, there's a new opportunity, new experience. I'm going to learn new things and just go head first into it. And so I had my 10 minutes of, oh, wow, like what has just happened? I've just been traded. And then it was like, okay, well, let's go see what the team's about. Let's go see what the city's like. Just being open-minded and um, knowing that, you know, I've got plenty of years ahead of me to play soccer and it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, I had I had plenty of times in my youth career. Um, I got released from an academy at 17 thinking that in England, usually that's that's the end, right? You, uh, you either go the education route with college or you go into the pros. And I didn't get offered a, a scholarship at 18 to be a professional soccer player. Um, again, I had my 10, 15 minutes of, of sulking and then a new opportunity came and my dad was just like, what about going to college in the US where you can try another path to get to the pros? And I was like, 
wow, okay, there's another opportunity. Just go head first at it. That's what I did. Love it. Yeah, uh, totally. You, there's always always multiple ways to view things, right? And uh, I'm sure the motivation um, comes into it because, you know, I, just speaking from experience, right? Um, when you get traded or you get cut or something, uh, yeah, it could be, oh, am I not good enough? Or is it, oh, God, they don't think I'm good enough. Wait till they see this, right? And yeah. at the time, that's how I used it, right? When I got traded from Columbus to Atlanta, I said, oh, they don't think I'm good, good enough still. Um, you know, and then we go out there and have successful years with Atlanta and win a championship and you're like, hmm, you know, prove them wrong type mentality. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um, but I yeah. love your story. Yeah, and I'm, I'm still going through that, you know, like I, I still think of that that coach that told me I wasn't good enough at 17. And, you know, now I've been a pro for, for six, seven years and, and hopefully for many more. Um, and, all, you know, always, as you said, trying to prove them wrong. Totally. Sure. I, I'm a firm believer. I love what you guys said, but I'm a firm believer that you never have to prove anyone wrong. You just always have to prove yourself right. Yeah. Right? And I think that's 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 kind of you kind of see it both ways, right? You you use that extra as that internal motivation to drive you even further. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm sure if you meet that same guy again at 17 that you that you got released at 17 one day, he'll shake his hand and you'll say thank you, thank you for <laughs> your extra piece of motivation to continue to prove myself right, man. So. Uh, kudos to you, man. It's an awesome, awesome story, man. Um, and I mean, resilience is huge, man. I love your resilience. Uh, I love the fact of how well you're doing for yourself, man. You, you truly deserve it. Um, you were a kid, you were a rookie who came in, dude, and and, and had um, such a great head on your shoulders and a great mentality. Um, and, and, you know, a prime example of someone that we can say that, that this is a kid that you need to watch. This is a kid that you need to view closely what his habits are, what he does before training, what he does after training. Um, and, and like you said, that that comes with routine and creating habits and uh, being a great Yeah. I mean, you guys flattered me. I didn't know you thought of me that way. That, that, that means a lot. Because <laughs> obviously, you know, I saw you guys as, as the as the first team players. You go out and you win an MLS Cup. So, you know, I still use things that – um obviously you guys were doing back then, uh, you know, Greg on the field as a fullback, Parky, obviously your leadership, like, you know, so things that I'm, I'm doing that I watched, I was watching you guys do, you know, six years ago. Appreciate it. My, my last question, um, because we deal with this one a lot as well, and you went through it um, yourself in your career, is switching positions. Um, sometimes you want to, sometimes you don't, sometimes a coach forces you, um, and there's always different ways to look at it. And I give my own experience. If I was a center back my whole career, I was asked to play outside back in Denmark and I hated it. I fought it. I like half-assed it, honestly. And, um, like six months later, they were like, no, go play outside back again. And that time I was like, all right, I'll go do it. And, you know, we ended up, you know, winning the title over in Denmark. I, you know, played in Champions League as an outside back, brought me back to the national team. And I'm like, what an idiot I was to, you know. <laughs> To fight it, yeah. right? How, how yeah. silly. Um, so you came into uh, the pro ranks as an attacker, right? A winger, a striker, uh, a forward. And now you're one of the best outside backs in the league. Uh, so talk us through that transition of like when you were first asked to play outside back, what you thought about that, how you went about it, and, and what led you to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, it's so relatable. I, um, I've even said it in media and, you know, I could pull up quotes where I've, I've literally, you know, said I'm a victim of my own versatility and the way I'm, I'm looking at it is like, you know, you're not, you're not a victim, right? You're given the coach options um, where in the past I looked at it like, oh, like I want to play here, but he knows I can play there. So I'm kind of like a stopgap player, right? And you're plugging holes. But really, you know, the most important thing is being available for the coach and being available wherever and being able to get on the field. Like that's, that's your first step in, in soccer is, you know, getting on the field. And it took me, you know, three, four years. I, I, I'd play winger, I'd play striker. And then they'd be like, Oh, what about fullback? You know, I, I kind of thought about it, but then again, I was like, no, like I've scored goals my whole career. You know, I'm not going to play defender. And then, um, kind of last year was, was the first real time where I thought, you know, if I want to extend my career as long as possible, I, I've got to, you know, give the coach, you know, the, the option of playing me wherever. And um, yeah, 
I was I was much more open minded. Maybe that came with a little bit of maturity that I didn't have back then, and it could have opened more doors. But you know, it, it, it's happened now. And um, if they want me to play fullback, my mind says, okay, I'm going to be the best fullback available, the best fullback in the league, be you know the best that I'm playing against. It's always always you know trying to yeah, I guess be available to the coach. What I'd say. Well, you, you didn't forget how to score goals, man. So you're okay there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't know what I was going to say. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's happening, Mom. I don't know if it will continue or if that's me done for the year. But um, yeah, it's been a decent start. <laughs> you're playing with house money. You've already hit the over, so you're good. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just riding the wave now. I I was I said to to my wife, she's like, two goals is pretty good for a fullback on the season. And then, you know, obviously Saturday I grabbed another, so. I gotta, gotta keep going, keep improving, and <laughs> yeah. Love to see it. Love to see it.